Well, hello and welcome. Hey, this is a really cool geometry problem. We've got three circles and a line from here to here. It's tangent, and we have to find the distance of A to B where that line intersects that middle circle. So here are the details, and then I'll give you a chance to pause the video and dive in. All right, so C to D, that's a line segment. It is tangent to this last circle that has its center at 5. Each of these circles has a radius of 1. They're all unit circles, and our job is to figure out what is the distance of the segment A to B? And that's where the tangent line, well, the line that's tangent to the last circle, intersects the middle circle that has a center at 3, 0. So if you'd like to try it, pause the video now because I'm going to give you some clues in about 3, 2, and 1. Here we go. All right, so the math we're going to end up using, this is your clue. We're going to have to use the fact that the tangent line is perpendicular to the radius of the circle at the point of tangency. So I'm going to draw a circle, a radius over here from this circle, and it's going to be perpendicular to CD. Uh, we're going to have some similar triangles. And of course, the cool well, consequence of similar triangles is that corresponding parts of similar triangles are corresponding or <laughs> corresponding parts of similar triangles are proportional, and we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to tie it all together. So if you were stuck when you tried it, and you'd like to try it again with these clues in your back pocket, go ahead and dive in, because in about three seconds, two and one, I'm going to dive in. All right. We're looking for the distance of A to B. Uh, a good idea, a good way to start, is to see if you can express the thing you're looking for in terms of something else. Now, when I did this problem, I wasn't really sure how to even start. So I just started by saying, hey, let's make this an isosceles triangle. Because if I have an isosceles triangle, I can drop a perpendicular bisector like this. I know it's isosceles because it's the radius either way. And so here's what I've got now. I know that this side, N, is half of AB. So AB is 2N. All right. Now, the other thing is... These problems rarely give you information that you don't have to use. So CD is tangent to the circle over there with the radius of 1 with the center at 5, 0. So if I draw that radius, I know it's perpendicular because tangent lines are perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. That means that these two line segments right here, these two are parallel to each other. And the reason I know that is they're both perpendicular to the same exact line. And I know they're perpendicular because, once again, CD is tangent, so tangent is um, perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. All right, that's pretty cool. So we got a right angle there, we got a right angle there, and the reason that that's important is because it's going to give us a pair of similar triangles. Do you see this little angle over here? We've got two triangles here that are similar. They both have right angles, and they both share that angle, so... All three angles are going to be congruent, which makes the triangle similar. So let's go ahead and explore those two triangles to so make sure you really see it. There's the first one right there. It's the biggest one. It goes to the center of the circle that uh, is at 5, 0. And the other one's at 3, 0. So these two overlap. That's how they look. If I separate them, just in case you don't see it, that's exactly how they are. And I know that they are similar because all three angles are going to be the same. If I know that they're both right angles and these two are the same angle because they overlap, then the other angles have to be the same. So let's go ahead and put it back on top of our original diagram so that you can see what I'm talking about, how it fits together. All right? So we have two similar triangles. That means the corresponding parts of similar triangles are proportional, so I know m over 3 is equal to 1 fifth. Now let's see where those numbers come from. The 5 over here is that bottom side. is the hypotenuse of the biggest triangle. And the 3 is the hypotenuse of the smaller triangle. So those are corresponding parts. And the M and the 1, well, those are the side legs over there, those kind of ones on the right-hand side for us, M and 1. So this is our proportion right here. Proportions are equal ratios. Ratios are fractions. So when you see things are proportional, what you're saying is you have two fractions that are equal. Right? We can solve that real easy. Multiply both sides by 3. M is equal to 3 fifths. Tuck that away over here and kind of reconstruct our original triangle there. All right, so we know M is 3 fifths. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's go ahead and just look at one of those triangles and solve for N and then double it, right? So Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared is C squared, of course, right? So the hypotenuse is 1. The legs are M and N. So we're just going to plug those in and solve for N. 
I think it's always a good idea to solve for the thing you're looking for before you plug in the values. Makes things just a little cleaner. So now we know m is 3 fifths. So we're going to plug in 3 fifths. Let's go ahead and square all that. 1 squared is 1. 3 fifths squared is 9 twenty fifths. You've got to get a common denominator, right? 25 over 25. Minus 9 over 25 is 16 over 25. And the square root of 16 and 25 is 4 and 5. So n is equal to 4 fifths. So AB is double of that. Double of 4 fifths is, of course, 8 fifths. So our answer, A to B, that's 8 fifths. That's pretty cool, right? Hey, if you like this video, do me a kind favor. Like, subscribe, comment, share. If you came up with a different method, I would absolutely love to hear from it. A lot of times people have a simpler method than what I came up with, and I think that's really exciting. Hey, if you're a teacher, I will post uh, a blog about this on my website. There's also all kinds of free cool stuff there for teachers and all kinds of useful things. Well, to engage students, make your life easier. I also have a TPT store. Links in the description below. Until next time, hope you have a great day.